Hi everyone, I'm Evan Lowe, California State Assembly member representing Silicon Valley, and I'm here on the Stanford campus with our illustrious president, uh, and he's asked, he asked me to call him by his first name, Mark. So, Mark, thank you so very much for the opportunity to be here. Evan, thank you so much for doing this. Great. Well, you know, we had a conversation about how the state of California has so many gems uh, within our borders. Of course, Stanford is nothing just but an institution here in California, but it's a globalized world and everyone knows uh, that name. What does it feel like? What is that kind of pressure that you as president of a, it is such a great university that everyone knows by its first name? What are the challenges? What does that feel like? Well, it, it can be challenging at times, but what really makes it so inspiring and exciting is the community, the people. Just extraordinary individuals, our faculty, our students, our staff, our alumni, and, uh, and the mission um, that we're all engaged in, mission of research and education, but for the benefit of humanity. So although it can be pressure at times, uh, it really is a, a great privilege, and I just feel very blessed to be here. Oh, sure. Now, you've been serving in this position for just a little bit, about uh, two years now? That's right. And, uh, but previously, you were also in the classroom. Uh, do, you, do, do you miss the classroom at all? And do you get a sense of some of that as you are now uh, leading uh, this illustrious institution? Uh, I do miss uh, some aspects of, of teaching and, and research. I was both a, a teacher and a researcher. Um, I, I do uh, try to, to get a little bit in there, so I, I, I give guest lectures in a number of courses on campus. I don't run a whole course, but I have uh, made cameo appearances in a few classes. But I do get the other side of things almost every day, which is the interaction with the students in a different way, not in the classroom and, and talking about the issues, but actually talking to them directly about uh, their aspirations, what they're excited about, what their concerns are, and uh, just that uh, wonderful sense um, and, and uh, wonderful uh, input that we have from the classroom of interacting with young people, I, I get that in a different way. Oh, sure. So w what are the greatest challenges then uh, in, in your daily lives? So what, what keeps you up at night uh, as you are in this role? Well, the first and foremost, of course, I, I worry about um, uh, are we serving um, our population, our, our students, our faculty, our staff, as well as possible? And are we having as much of an impact, uh, beneficial impact, on the world as we can have? So it's always about trying to make sure that um, we're doing the best we can on campus, but also that we do the best we can for the world. Uh, that does keep us uh, awake at night uh, at times, but again, it comes back to the community and also the team of people that we, I can work with here uh, that really make it um, a, a pleasure and a joy every day. Oh, sure. You know, uh, getting into the specifics on higher education in the state of California, it's very complex uh, given the various institutions of our community colleges uh, within our K through 12 and uh, a number of uh, uh, advanced uh, educational systems that we have. What are the things that we in the state of California should be mindful of? Let's say the average Californian is watching this conversation and saying, well, what is the state of affairs within higher education? What would you say? In terms of the general state of affairs, we have a very strong system. The, the California uh, higher education system, you know, put in place many decades ago, is one of the strongest in the nation and, and the world. And the combination of the, the public university system, uh, as well as private universities uh, like uh, Stanford, working together, I think, provide huge uh, benefits to our, our local, our regional, our, our state communities in terms of education, in terms of uh, economic opportunity in terms of driving economic growth and helping create jobs on the one hand. And they, we do this not just for our state, but for the world as a whole. So mm -hmm. I'd say it's, it's very good, but uh, it is under pressure. And in particular, of course, um, the, uh, the state institutions, uh, I believe it would be great if the, the, the legislature would put as a priority to really provide more support for our state institutions, uh, which are so important and serve so many people in our, our community here and who are essential partners for us uh, at a university like uh, Stanford. Right, so you're giving me a plan of action, uh, some, some duty I thought, I, for I, thought I'd try to slip that in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate hearing that because I've had a number of pieces of legislation with a coordinating entity and making sure that the institutions are having that conversation on the pipeline for not only the present but for the future. In addition, as we have talked before as well, the investment in the California Higher Education Master Plan and ensuring that we have a direction on what we value. And clearly in education, there's a distinction between that 
that of an expense, a taxpayer's expense for education, but that of an investment. Higher education is an investment, not an expense. And it's important that we continue to believe that within our values of our state budget. That's right. We, we need to invest in our people uh, and our, our young people who are the future of our state. And we need to invest in research that will generate solutions to the great problems that we face here, uh, as well as create economic opportunity and jobs. Right. Now, how about what you're hearing from the students? Um, when my father uh, went to school at Cal, uh, he, there were different challenges that existed versus the students that are here today. Uh, as you have, and I have mentioned, the, the cost of living, the unique challenges that is specific, particularly in the Bay Area, are unique. Uh, how do uh, we and how does an individual like yourself in this capacity acknowledge the challenges of student life and what do we need to do collectively as a whole uh, to help solve this issue? Well, well for, for students, I, I couldn't agree more. We have to uh, be very, very mindful of, of cost. Um, over the past decade, uh, we at Stanford have put in place very robust financial aid for our undergraduate population so that now we are needs blind for domestic students, and maybe I can tell you just a, a few of the components Please. of that. Um, so we uh, admit students based on their ability to be successful at Stanford. We don't look at their financial needs. Once they're admitted, then we work with them to make sure that they can come here. Uh, if your family earns less than $65,000 a year, uh, the student will get a full ride, uh, free tuition, fees, and room and board. If the family earns less than $125,000 a year, it's free tuition with a sliding scale between the two that extends further into the middle class. Just recently, we announced further enhancements to our financial aid to help uh, uh, people in the middle class. As a result, uh, this year, 17% of the student population at Stanford are the first members of their family to go to college, the first wow. generation. And 80% of our students graduate without any debt whatsoever. Um, so, uh, we, we, so we think we've made uh, a lot of good progress. There's still more that we need to do, but that's the tra trajectory we're on. Uh, of course, affordability is an issue for our undergraduate population, for our graduate students as well. We have to be very mindful of their stipends, make sure that they, um, have, uh, uh, they can afford to live here. We, we were just completing uh, the building, one of the largest in the history of the university, to add 2,000 more beds for graduate students so that fully 75% of our graduate population will be able to live on campus. Mm -hmm. um, and then more generally, we, we're very concerned, of course, about affordability for um, uh, all the members of our community, including our faculty, including our staff, uh, especially uh, our uh, low-income staff uh, who are here. Um, and so there we're, we're, we have a variety of different programs that we're working on, and we have put in place uh, since last May a major task force that's focused on affordability for every single segment of our community. We have to pull all the levers here. This is a big issue, I think, for all of us mm -hmm. uh, in the Bay Area. Um, but coming back to undergraduates, where we draw on, on, on students from around the country, um, uh, around our state, of course, around the country, around the world. Uh, we want to make sure that students, any qualified student, can actually afford to come to Stanford. Sure, sure. So I think that's where the state of California also plays a role within the infrastructure of housing, transportation alike. And Correct. This, this is a regional problem. It's something that we have to work together on. Uh, and that we are, we have been working with uh, other companies, with uh, local governments um, on, on uh, uh, asking how can we um, uh, tackle these problems of, of housing, of transportation, affordability more generally? And it's uh, really uh, refreshing to hear about the statistics that you highlighted uh, with respect to the state of California uh, with our community college system. Uh, we have tried to attempt in making uh, first year of community college free, lowering the barriers of entry to provide a greater sense of opportunity for individuals. And that's the essence of where the state of California wants to go. And clearly, Stanford, you're taking a leadership role in ensuring the same thing. I think opportunity is key. We need to, uh, we want to make sure that every student has the same opportunity uh, to benefit from, in our case, a Stanford education, but as you're, you're saying more generally, all of the, the, the students in California have the, the opportunity to benefit uh, from higher education. Right. And you earlier mentioned about our uh, tech companies here in Silicon Valley. Uh, their bottom line depends on the vitality of their workforce in the future. Uh, and as you well know, a number of, of our tech companies get its workforce from institutions like Stanford. And so the partnership and the relationship is critical. Uh, what type of role and conversations have you had with uh, some of our tech executives on the roles and 
obligations uh, that they also have within the ecosystem here in California? Well, the, we, we do, of course, uh, have a lot of interchange with local companies. You know, the, it's been a very symbiotic relationship with the development of, of Silicon Valley. Um, we, we train students and provide a lot of the workforce in, in these companies, whether they're in tech companies or in biotech companies, developing new medicines for poorly treated diseases. Um, and, uh, and also a lot of the ideas, of course, are incubated here. Many of them actually, they're reduced to practice at Stanford, but then commercialized uh, in local communities. So there's a very strong interchange between the two. As a result, there is a lot of exchange with um, uh, local leaders of, of, of companies. I would say in terms of you know, your question of, of training students, uh, there, I, I think what we feel, I think what um, uh, local leaders feel as well is we want to make sure that we, we provide, uh, that we, we train students to be well-rounded so that they're not just very skilled at the technical discipline that's necessary for that particular application that the, the company might be interested in, but that they're equipped with the skills to think more broadly about the work that they're doing, to think uh, about how to make it more human-centered and human-compatible, to think through the ethical or societal impacts of their work, whether there might be issues related to privacy, for example, um, or you know, to bias in, 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 um, in looking at, at data information. So we want to make sure that, we, that our students, when they graduate, not only are equipped for the technical task they might undertake, but that they're fully equipped to think through the ethical and societal impacts of their work. And we think that will help them be better employees, better leaders within their companies, and ensure that um, the culture of the companies within the Valley is one that is really focused on benefiting humanity and putting uh, society first. That's really great to hear because so much of it is um, uh, being taught to, to the test and rather what are the real life skills that are required to be successful in, in everyday life and, and the reality that we, of the world that we live in now. Yeah. And those day-to-day those, uh, -day, uh, levels of expertise. Um, how about now pivoting towards more of a personal issue for those uh, who aspire to uh, be president of a university someday or uh, to, to lead um, by example. Um, what are some areas uh, of advice? Well, if you were to give a, a piece of advice to someone who said, I wish to also be in a leadership capacity like yourself, what one piece of advice would you give to individuals? Well, I'd say um, uh, really think hard about your, your personal values and the, value of the values of your organization. Um, the, I, I think putting values first is the single most important thing that you can do whether it's as an employee or in a leadership capacity for myself, you know, I, I distill it down to, to, to three sets of values, sort of personal values, of, uh, where again, th there are many, many values, but if I think about the top three, it'd be honesty, integrity, and personal accountability. Um, those are personal values. Interpersonal values, mm -hmm. how to interact with other people, respect, collaboration, and compassion. And then uh, there are three values that I think of as action values, uh, optimism, initiative, and tenacity. Uh, so I, I, those, that's what I try to live by um, you know, every day of my life, and I think that's what helps set my moral compass as I go into a leadership position. I think every individual has to ask themselves, what are the values that will lead me as I try to lead others? Sure. So do you wake up every day and say, and you have those listed and you, those key principles and saying, here's what I need to, uh, to abide by? Well, I think it's, it's one of those things when you, when you sit down at first and think about it, um, you then have to remind yourself every day. I'm, I'm a slow learner, you know, so I sort of remind myself. But then after a while, it becomes um, second nature. But you have to have that discipline to come back to it all again and say, step back and say, wait a minute, why are we doing this? Sure. Okay, why, why are we focusing there and so on? Let's step back and look at the bigger picture. Think about the values. Think about our mission as a university. What are we trying to achieve? Sure. Well, some things that I know I'll keep in mind when uh, heading back into the state legislature uh, and governing uh, within the state of California. Uh, I'm going to be very respectful of your time. But finally, um, what do students address you by? I understand that you have a nickname and people might uh, do they say Mr. President to call you Mark. What is the, how do they address you? Uh, they call me MTL. MTL, okay. <laughs> so we hear that so phrase that they're referring MTL, to you. MTL, they're referring to me. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm happy, you know, for them to call me whatever. They say, hey, you, I'll, I'll <laughs> respond to that. But somehow they've all coalesced around 
MTL. It <laughs> sort of warms my heart. Very good. I think they mean it in an affectionate way. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, for those of you listening uh, here, you can refer to our dear president as, the M as MTL if you hear that uh, in the streets. Uh, he definitely has some street cred as well, but I very much appreciate the time uh, that you provided, and thank you so very much for what you do in the state of California uh, and for us in the region. Thank you so much, Evan, and thank you for all that you do also for our great state. And thank you also for the opportunity to, to talk about um, this great institution that I feel so blessed uh, to be a part of. Yes, well, we're trying to do our respective parts and serving our community. So again, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you.